And today we are going to be talking about 360 deals exposed, the truth behind the controversy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. We are your hosts, Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. I am Juggernaut. I am Mike Trauma D. If it's your first time here, make sure that you like, commenting, and subscribing. You know, make sure you're following, whatever you got to do. We want to jump right into this thing because there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of, like, bad information as it relates to 360 deals. And, you know, there are some things that are being talked about with 360 deals where people are saying that, hey, it's not so bad. Some people are saying, hey, it's pretty good. And we're here to kind of give you what's the real in terms of what you need to look out for with these type of deals. So let's jump into it. First, let's tell the people what is a 360 deal because they may not understand what that is. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It, it, the 360 deal allows the record label to participate in stream, other uh, streams of income that you're entitled to. So for example, let's say you're doing shows, you get a book deal, uh, you get a movie situation, um, anything outside of uh, recording music um, and you're being paid for that, the record label can get a percentage of that as part of the income. And that's really to supplement the money that they've been missing out because of uh, illegal streaming back in the days and, and things of that nature. So, you know, it's really just to, to make them hold it, man. It, it's nothing <laughs> sneaky about it as, as people are, are, are think it is, you know. There's nothing really shifty or sneaky about it. You know, 360 deal, they, you know, they gotta get theirs because they putting their money up, man. When they when a when a record company is investing and putting their money up, how are they gonna get their money back? And I think that's I think that's where everybody kind of loses sight of everything. It's like you can't get that level of celebrity without someone investing a whole bunch of money into you. So a lot of times the artist thinks that hey, they shouldn't be entitled to you know this deal that I did that's not related to music. Well, if your celebrity wasn't that big, how would you have gotten that deal? Right, and that's that's the logic behind the three hundred and sixty. Yeah, especially if they're they're um, yeah, putting their funding and they're using their resources to market, promote you. You know, get your name to become a household one. You know, what happens when you get that movie deal? They and they're responsible for for making your name big enough to get to get that deal. You know, so what they can't participate, they only can just eat off of that. Think about it the other way around. As you, you know, as you as a business owner, you know, you, you meet somebody and you, you know, you like what they got going on and you say, you know what, I'm gonna put a hundred grand behind you, or I'm gonna take my two hundred, five hundred, half a million, whatever. I'm gonna take my hard earned money that I've saved up or I've invested or whatever, and I'm gonna put that into blowing you up and making your name big. And then let's say they can't sell no records, right? After you spend half a million dollars, let's say they can't sell no records, but they go go, but they go ahead and go ink a, a deal with with, with a, a, a movie company for a string of movies, and he's and that artist is making a million dollars a pop. Shouldn't you be entitled to that? To some of it, you made that artist who they are. Shouldn't you be entitled to something from making them become a brand? Or should you just be like, nah, take the L? You know, so I think I think um it seems like these days a lot of artists are are, you know, not looking at it from a from a business standpoint. You know, a lot of artists are doing things and behaving in ways that are like they want this, they want that, but you know, you have to you have to look at it from the other side of the table. Like what do you, what what is the business getting for it? You know, you're going to have to give something up. You want something, you got to give something up, whether it's, you know, masters, you know, or some sort of rights, percentage of rights, maybe, you know, 
or maybe you should maybe you should pay for your own stuff. You know, maybe don't take the 360 and and, and go on 50-50 and you be responsible for funding your your whole situation. Fund it yourself then. And the label is responsible for distributing and and using and then using uh their connect to put it on certain outlets. And that's you that's know? the reality of it. If you don't if you don't want them to, if you don't want them to take everything from you, you need to pay your share. Yeah. You need to pay and, need to pay your way through it, pay for your promotion, pay for your marketing. You need to pay for it. Whatever you pay for, then you don't have to worry about them sharing the revenue that comes in the future. But, but that's not the artists don't want to do that. Yeah, they don't want to do that. Like a lot of artists want want somebody to invest with them, and and they, they have they have the nerve to turn around and say, "Hey, you, you know, you blow up with me, or or I'm helping your company look good, or or I'm blowing up your name." You know, like come oh, on. Come on. Come on, like, like we said at the same time, like come on, like come on. Because <laughs> I've seen it, I've seen it. Um, I've seen, you know, I had multiple debates with with people on Twitter and IG because they just don't understand the nature of, of the business, you know. And if you run your business that way, you will, you will, you will, you'll never be have a successful business. You know, you're in business to make money, not to not to consistently lose money. You know, there's risk in, in, in business, yes, but, you know, not to go out there and say, you know what, we're just going to give this money and and we're not going to expect anything in return. Like, that that doesn't make any sense. You know, so, all these record labels are doing is, is, is protecting the investment. So, so that's the thing. So that's the truth behind the whole controversy. The truth of the controversy is they're paying for your celebrity, right? They're paying for you to become a celebrity. People think that celebrity isn't paid for you have to be promoted and marketed if you if you're looking to become a household name it doesn't happen by accident though those things are by design those things take resources it doesn't happen by accident mm -hmm. so well if we're talking about growing you into a household name that's going to take millions of dollars millions. you know that and i know that this is yeah. not especially in the music business if we're talking about different industries maybe something different but for the music business as it's constructed right now because of the saturation and where there's so much music being released so much artists coming out you have to spend a high amount of money in order to cut through all of the red tape yeah let's just be honest so these companies have to find alternate streams of revenue and i think you and i talked about that before saying basically you want to not be in one category right. so the the labels understand that now that artists are multifaceted. Artists are going to have multiple ways to earn money, and whatever they invest, they got to get it back. We've already talked yeah. about that. So, yeah. so this is not a controversy anymore. It, like it this is be, it shouldn't be a controversy. Right? Yeah, it, it shouldn't be. This is just the nature of the situation of a of a. It's basically you taking out a business loan and you having to repay it. Like right. this is no this is no different than that. Like you're taking out a business loan, you got to repay that business loan. Now, the, your your bank doesn't care how you pay them back the money, but you got to pay them back the money. So, if you if you got a business loan and you have to do different types of things with your business to get the funds back to pay it, that's basically what's happening here. Is that you have to make the money back. So, they're going to take it from every income source until it comes back, and that's just I don't even understand what the controversy is. But what we keep seeing more and more with artists. Is that artists just seem to be more in in this day and age, just more like it's becoming more self-centered. That they they want the money from the label, they want the production for free, they want this to go, you know, they want everything, and then they want themselves to be blown up in celebrity, and then turn around and oh no, want nothing. And right. I just think that's I think that's just one of the really unfair and self-centered ways that people can operate these days. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that, you know, um, especially with artists dealing with producers, you know, the way they're, they're saying, oh, the producer shouldn't get anything, you know. It's like, crazy. You know, pay them one time and that's it, you know, like, I didn't understand that. I don't understand that way of thinking, you know, and to be honest with you, you know, it, 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 kind, of, it, it kind of pissed me off, man, if you think about it, music. From from a producer standpoint, the the music that we maybe create 
the production is 50% of the record. Like without without music, it's no record. There's no record. It's 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 spoken word. It's you know it's poetry. It's a cappella. <laughs> Try putting on a concert. Are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna do the entire concert with with, with a cappella? What about nightclubs? I could go on and on. Like what what if all producers just went on strike and said, you know what, we're not making any beats and we're not giving out no music. All artists just 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 do your thing vocally with, with nothing. This is called the music business, not the vocal business, not the acapella business. It's called the music business. So producers have a a, a, a good stake in this as as well as artists who you know putting lyrics together. And there needs to be some some, you know, some respect has to be. Give them to the producer, man. Like, come on, like, man. That's a, man, that's a whole separate episode, man. <laughs> that's a whole separate episode. It's, 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 the, it's crazy. The, what some the, of know. these artists like, and it's a lot of these new independent artists that's coming on the scene, and they just feel that you know they don't need this, they don't need that, and and they're not. They just don't. They just don't know the business. Is what what I, what, it, what it seems like. They don't know the business, and they're just. Out there, just spitting craziness, and I think that's part. That's that's part of the reason why the three hundred and sixty deal for a lot of them seems like it's the boogeyman. It's because of that. It's because of that attitude of that attitude of you know, no one is is responsible for my celebrity but me. You know, and and I think and I think that's where the issue is. But you know what? Also, um, the three hundred and sixty deal hit a lot of. old artists kind of unexpected out the blue too because you know they were used to getting over on the label yep. for, for forever you know they were used to like okay if i have a bad record deal fine i'm just gonna go do shows yeah and i'll, I'll, money on I'll, the road. I'll, I'll, I'll go get on the road and i'll go up and down the east coast you know i'll shoot over to the west coast like i'll i'll, I'll, I'll hit the circuit down south and I'll, I'll make my 10 grand per show i'll make my 15 20 grand a show Man, there was some artists down south that was that was making eighty grand a show, you know, like, and they were booked out like booked, every weekend, booked every from Thursday all the way through to Monday. The yeah. rest in the week, the whole entire weekend. Again, eighty. They were getting eighty grand a show, and we're not. And we're not even talking on if it's a holiday, right? And then then the prices go through the roof. So what was happening is these record labels wasn't wasn't participating in that at all. They were sitting there dead in the water. The record sales, you know, what it was, and they couldn't recoup. <laughs> you know, but so the reality the artist, that's that's the funny thing because the reality is that an artist could an artist that sold maybe a quarter million copies, right? Like you figure that that wouldn't be a, that's not enough to go gold, but it's 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 a you know it's a decent number. That was that, like you said, that it it would put them in a category where they would have enough of a fan base where they could yeah. tour like that. Because just because they went gold and went platinum doesn't necessarily mean they were cool, right? That it really too. Down, it really comes down to what was the budget, what was spent. So you you, you could have sold some records, but if if if, if the record company sold um, spent a whole lot, you know, not just on recording and marketing promotion, but you know, there's a lot of other things that go on behind the scenes. You know, and Doug, you and I know like that recording budget gets eaten up fast, and it's not just the recording; it's all the things that come along with it. Man, let's travel. See. That full budget used to be real nice too. <laughs> honestly, the, honestly, artists live off that budget. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the reality of it. I think yeah. people don't really realize that. It's like they 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 go to the studio, they eat, they drink, they you know like it's everything is encompassed in that budget, and. From the, from our days, those budgets included people uh, transporting their cars, <laughs> cell phone bills. Like it was yeah. entourages. It was mm-hmm. it was uh, crazy. So we were talking about budgets that always exceeded a million dollars. Right. Yeah. And this is early in the game. This is not like you know. This is not you know where people are now. But at the end of the day, it was like they were spending millions of dollars to just record one record that 
hopefully sell half a million copies. Right. So, I mean, that's that's really, you know, when you're a company on your business, you just want to make sure that, you know, what you're what you're putting into your investment, you're going to you're going to see some sort of return on it. And this this 360 deal allows them to to, you know, access to those things, allows them to receive uh, income from di- different parts of, you know, what you're entitled to. Now, it would it wouldn't it would hurt you if you're not doing much numbers in the other arenas. You know, if your shows are not selling out, if if you're not getting any type of other deals outside of that, then it could start to hurt you a little bit. You know, because now they're tapping into to, to all of those things, and you're not really you know you're not really getting much from it in the first place. You right. Know? Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I understand in some cases, you know, where the frustration will come from, you know, um, you're not getting no money from your, from your, from your record sales because you didn't recoup, you know? Um, so you say, okay, I'm going to hit the road, but if you only get any three G's, five G's a show, you're going to have to, Gonna have to do a whole lot of shows in order to make a to, to make a living, you know. Um, and it de- it depends on your hustle and your, and your grind, you know. For some artists, they say, you know, if I'm gonna get five five, if I'm gonna do five grand a show, then you know I'm gonna hit um I'm gonna get two shows a night. I'm gonna hit up I'm gonna hit like two or three cities, on you know a weekend, and they gonna they gonna find find a way to make it happen. You know, it just really becomes, uh, it depends on your hustle and your drive. If your hustle ain't driving right, then the same for you, man, at all. Yeah, and then for you, if you, if you can't get the hustle right. Yeah, because I think that's a key thing. I think that's a key thing that um, so many so many artists are missing. Like, like, you know, they think about just the creative aspect, but they're not thinking about, you know, the hustle and drive that goes along with it. They're not thinking about the business aspect. You know, you got to put on those different hats, you know, and that's the only you, you really got to look at all of those things. You just can't be one sided and think it's going to be like this. You can't just be creative. It's not going to work. You got to think about it as a business. I'm a business owner. How I'm going to maneuver in that. You got to be a hustler. You got to say, you know what? I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to stack it. I'll do this. I got to make smart decisions. I got to make smart investments. You know, uh, don't be too quick to buy the biggest biggest chain or the, or the or the craziest car or you know the whole quote-unquote rapper starter kid and trying to you know keep up with the joneses as they say you know and this happens way too much and then you could easily crash and burn what happens then too, like you got to think about the lifespan of an artist and i don't think a lot of artists are thinking in that level they're not thinking about the long term and the the the, the implications of what it's going to take to last Based off that, based off their situation, their current situation, I, I want to pivot a little bit and say and, and talk about like, you know, like let's start really to kind of line out like the the true pros and the true cons of the three sixty. Because I think we talked about this in the previous episode. It's just letting people know what the true cons are, the true uh, pros are, because you can you can see that there are some pros to a 360 and like you just said there are some cons to a 360 and okay. you have to kind of align your deal with what your short term and long term goals are and if you don't if you don't do that properly then you can accept this type of situation and it could either help you or it can hinder you from getting to where you want to go right. especially if you have the resources for artists who have the resources some would say, hey, use your own money. Um, others would say, never use your own money. Right. But it, it just kind of depends because, you know, the interest rates from record labels, that's not really disclosed, but it ain't a good interest rate. Right. You know, and it, it really, it depends on also what you negotiate. That's you know, right. I think, I think that's really key because all 360 deals are not equal. So you need to really consider and think about okay, if I'm gonna get a 360 deal, I have to make sure that you know it's either for a certain length of time or it's 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 up to to whatever the label recoups or whatever the case may be. But you have to sit down with your attorney and say, you know, I need it like this, I need it like this, 
you know, you can't just take the standard deal, you know, um, because if you do, you know, it's, it's in their favor always, you know, but be clear, you're going to have to give up something, you know, you're going to have to give up something. You can, you're not going to have it all your way across the board. Um, if you want a 360 deal, um, I think that's where you'll get the majority of your, your advances when you when you when you're dealing with the 360 deal. You know, um, if you want a if you want a bigger advance, heftier recording budget, um, a heftier marketing budget, you're gonna most likely have to do a 360 deal. If you're telling the label that I'm not doing a 360 deal, then you're barely going to get an advance, if any, because they have to recoup it. So you telling a record label, no, I'm not doing a 360 deal. That's like telling a label, like, I want to use your money, but there's, um, I'm not giving you any additional ways of you getting your money back. That's it, really. That's in a, in a yeah. nutshell. I want your money, but I'm not going to pay you back. Yeah, that's really what you're saying. I'm not going to pay you back because yep. I'm going to take your money and I'm going to run with it. I'm going to create new deals and new opportunities based off of that, and you're not going to and you're not going to get anything from it. That's that's what it's saying. So why should a label put up all that money if they know you're going to take that money and run with it, become this big super pop star on the on the big movie screen, <laughs> and collecting million dollar checks from 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 a bunch of movies. And, and they can't participate in that, and they made you, you know, this icon. Um, what was that? So boom. So the uh, one of the pros in getting a 360 deal is that you would most likely get a bigger advance. Um, a record label is most likely to say, you know, we'll give you a heftier advance, knowing that you are willing to part- allow us to participate in your other uh, areas of, of income. So this kind of allows the, the record label to say, okay, we're going to get our, our money back. Got it. So if we're talking about the cons, I'll go through, I'll go through the cons of the situation. The cons is basically you got to share revenue. It's revenue sharing, right? You got you to gotta, you gotta cut another piece of your pie up, and your pie might already be cut up between a manager, a road manager, a business manager, attorneys, tax man. Like this is this is just a situation when it comes to you know um, when it comes to a three sixty, it's another person to pay out. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you think about it, here's another pro. You know, you know, tapping into a, a three sixty deal will allow you to now um, utilize the different areas and resources the uh, the, the record label has. Now, now, now the record label opens up their resources to you now. And said, "Hey, you know, let's 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 work together. Let's look to get you in this movie. Let's look to get you on this video game. Let's look to get you this 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 branding um, clothing line. Let's look to get you these sponsorships or this or this this huge festival. You know, so it, it allows you to to get to to get more you know situations going. So that's another pro for you. Now, if you don't have that going." It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> gonna be hard. Like you need, you need the support of the label. Like that's just, this is just the reality of it. The artists that have the true support of the label, along with some good music, have yeah. great chances of being successful. Yeah. The ones that don't have the support of the label, it, it gets a little bit dicey. But the, I, label, I think, the label will, will, will be would will, 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 you know love to get in to do those things because they know that they're gonna get some of the the benefits from it. They're gonna reap some of the benefits. So they're gonna say, you know what? Yeah, let's 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 work together and let's let's create these opportunities together, because they're gonna participate in, in the income. So I'm gonna play the devil's advocate, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be that artist. Yo, man, I never want to give a 360. The label can't get all of my masters. You know, I can't. I, they can't get a piece of the masters. I'm not gonna sign no 360. I'm hot. Y'all want me? You know, I'm the hottest in my city right now. Why do I got to give up any portion of all of my revenue? You guys are only invested in my music. Like that's you're not giving me money to make it in film. You're not giving me money to make it in endorsements. You only give me money for my music. 
but the music is but the music is your calling card. Your music is like an ad that gets you hot everywhere. You know, like your music catapults, and we said this in a, in a, in a man. You guys, I hope you guys are listening to our podcast, man. Or you keep you dropping them. They, they're not, the they're not listening, man. Like, like, they, they're they gonna catch up maybe like a year or two later. They're gonna be like, damn, they, they gave all of this free game that realizing your, like your music allows you. To, to 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 open opportunities in different areas, so you wouldn't you wouldn't ha- you most likely wouldn't have some of these opportunities if it wasn't for the music. You you might not get that acting gig if it wasn't for you selling you know the record you sold, based on what the record label put in, right? Their resources, their manpower, all of that costs their staff, like. All of that cost somewhere. It ain't free. So, so if you if, if you're saying, well, I don't want a 360 deal, so and so, all right, then you may just get a, a regular partnership distribution, yeah, or distribution should, where yeah, you gotta put up where you gotta put up a certain amount to fund your own project. And then in those situations, the record labels don't always, you know, they don't go go all out. Not when they got a whole bunch, a whole, a whole roster full of other artists that got 360s. They ain't gonna go all out for you. They're gonna go all out for the 360. Because they got a vested equity share. Exactly. And that's always been the uh, that's always part of the other podcast we talked about is that they always go to the interest of where their equity stakes are. Yeah. Like if 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 they have an equity stake, a share in something, that's where <laughs> they're gonna put their interest in. That's where they're gonna put their energy into. So if the artists out there that are listening, that are running from these 360 deals, listen, you run from them if you have your own resources. If you have your own resources and you don't mind spending your own resources, fine. Then you can you can run from it. But for those who are more business savvy and understand how to leverage debt and how to leverage other people's money into other opportunities and greater opportunities, you would embrace it because you, you you know how to leverage those type of situations into better situations, bigger situations that you can eat from, you know, in perpetuity. But the, the, the mind framing has to change and making sure that you understand how to leverage those those type of situations when they occur. The, the 360 deal, if you think about it, is a, is a true partnership. This, this is true. You know, this. it's it's an... If you think about it as in, listen, you know, as an artist, you there are certain things you want to do, certain, you know, if you want to get into movies, if you want to open up some sort of uh, clothing line, or it's just, you know, you have different things you want to get into, you know, you can use the, the, the company resources to help you get those things. And they'll right. be happy to, get, to help you with it because they know they have a vested interest. But if you had a, a old school standard record deal, they, they're not interested in that. Like they're not interested in in, in, in busting their tail to, to 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 get you this, to get you that, and then you get all hot in your movies, and then you doing your thing and getting paid, and they still struggling trying to you know sell a certain amount of records to you know get you to recoup. <laughs> like the the math ain't mathing. <laughs> he said the math ain't mathing. <laughs> Math ain't mathing. And, and and for those that's talking about, you know, the masters and rights and all of these things, listen, in some form or fashion, you're gonna have to give up something. So you have to pick and choose what you're gonna give up. And at the same time, it all comes down to what you negotiate. There's too many people screaming bad deals, bad uh, uh 360 deals, bad publishing deals, bad you know, this and that, masters, it, it comes down to what you negotiate, what you sign off on. You have to sign these things off. You make these deals. And if you don't know anything about the music business, you better start doing some research. You know, you being just the artist alone does not uh, 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 give you a pass. You know, and lately I'm seeing way too many artists getting getting up on these, these social medias screaming, oh, my rights and 360 deals and 
my master's taken from me and you know bad publishing deals and blah 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 come on we in 2023 and you still making these type of deals you still not reading your contract still not reading them still you, don't you, understand you, you still not getting a, a professional a attorney to, to to walk you through through this and do that you still just going ahead and, and going to the record label and signing a, any piece of paper just to show it off for the grand that, that you signed to the label Come on, this is you like for for decades they were talking about sharks in the industry and how bad it could get. By now, everyone should be reading their contract. By now, everybody should say, you know what, I'm gonna go get a, a, another pair of eyes to look this contract over. By now. Nah, folks ain't interested in that right now. So folks are not folks are not interested in really learning what they need to learn. To protect themselves right like that's what's happening you know and and even if you're providing the information for people to learn how to protect and monetize their 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 art they're bypassing the information folks are either they're, they're not they're not following the directions and they're not listening to what's going on so in this type of scenario you know you just have to figure out the hard way or learn it the hard way like that's really the situation for a lot of artists. They think that it doesn't really apply to them. They think they can kind of chart something different. But again, it comes back to knowing the business. And again, you have to know what to tell your attorney to put in those terms. Yeah. I, I did. Most attorneys are going to work off of standards, industry standards. Some industry standards shouldn't be standard anymore. Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's really up to you. You get what you negotiate. And I think, I think, uh, if anything you take away from this at all is you get what you negotiate. You know, nothing is standard. It doesn't have to be standard. You know. So, so to everybody out there, the three sixty deal is not really a boogie, man. Yeah. What what, what do they call it in uh John Wick? They, they call him the boogeyman, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, I forget the term that they they use in that. It's you know if you're if you're a, if you're a, a business savvy artist, you can use a three sixty deal as as a tool to get the company really interested in every area that you're trying to get into. You know, um, if you have a, a a set goal plan and you sit down with the company and say, "This is my goal plan." How can we achieve this? They're more they're more susceptible to want to listen to what you got going on because they know that they have invested interest, that they're going to be a part of it. And if you're successful in all those arenas, they will be successful in all those arenas. You know, if you just come in with your your your, your, your record and that's it, you're only gonna go, you're only gonna get so much, you know, and you know. There's too many artists on a record label now. You know, there's too much time to have to divvy up. So they have to sort of pick and choose. You know, do we deal with this artist who doesn't want to allow us to participate in other areas of income? Or are we going to deal with these artists that is that wants to go all the way and they want to work with us and, you know, they want to try and get into different movies and sponsorships and branding deals and uh, uh, tours and, and they want us to eat with them. Who you go? Who they gonna go with? You know, and and of course, yeah, the, you know, in, in some scenarios or some cases, there are gonna be certain rights that may have to be given a certain percentage up. You know, um, but it comes down to what to go, what you negotiate, how much you negotiate. You know, what length of time um, you negotiated for. You know, how many albums. You know, what at what percent. You know. There's a lot of there's a lot of room for negotiation. You just have to you just have to do it, and um, a lot of kids are, are are not reading their contract. They're not seeking professional uh, uh, advisement, and they're just signing off paperwork. And they're just more happy. It feels like it's almost like a clout chasing thing. They they're just happy to just sign on that line. They're just happy to want to sign on sign on on uh, social media. 
being in that that boardroom with a bunch of staff and you, you, you and, and you signing that paper and smiling and looking at it like I'm signed, I'm signed, I'm signed. But you know what what did you sign? You know. So so I want I want to do something real quick, right? So the top three reasons why people should be signing a 360 deal. Go. Well, okay, I could give you, let me see. The first one, of course, the big event, right? You could get a bigger event. Um, you sign a 360. Second thing is you have more uh company support, I should say. You know, you have more company resources, you know. Um and I think I want to say the third thing is you have a better chance of meeting uh, successful goals, meaning that you will be able to participate in different areas, which will allow for uh, various success. Now you're just not in one lane, you're in multiple lanes now. So uh, this increases your chance of, of success. You know, yeah, you may not sell a million records, but maybe you might be successful in this movie. Maybe you might be successful in this this clothing line. Maybe you might be successful in this other brand. You know, because, you know, so it, it it just leaves so many opportunities and, and doors open for you. Um, I would say. So now, if we were to, to to switch gears, and I'll say, okay, give the people three reasons why you should never sign a three. <laughs> A 360 deal. Never, um, if you have, if you, if, okay, if you get into a situation where the record label does not uh, help you in all the other areas, they just kind of sit on their ass and you, you're stuck doing the work trying to negotiate your movie deals and you're trying to get all this thing happening and they're not opening any doors for you. They're kind of just sitting back and letting you do all the hard work and reaping the benefits. Mm-hmm that's kind of weak you know if they're not supporting you that's kind of weak um you you're gonna have to do some real investigation to find out before you sign does this, is this record label really going to support you or are they going to sign you through to a 360 deal and kind of just sit on their ass and not give you the support so that's one one crucial thing uh second thing is um if they're talking about not giving you a, a sizable uh, advance, you know, if they're not giving you a sizable advance, if they're not giving you something to work with, you know, it's kind of like, man, you know, I'm giving you all these opportunities to make your money back and you're not giving me a sizable advance for you to live off of, then I think that's a red flag. That's, that, 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 I don't think that's worth it. You know, you might as well just do it yourself at your own pace. You know, um, as long as you're disciplined and dedicated and you're a hard grinder, go at your own pace, and, you know, and work your work yourself up until, until the right situation, you know, makes itself available for you, you know. The third thing, the third con of a 360 deal, I don't know if I have a third one. That, that's, that's, you, you, you said a, a whole lot, you know, you said that you said the, the lack of support. The lack of resources. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we may have. I, I think we can tie resources into a network, right? I think that maybe the um, that I think another con could be is, and it, it may depend on the type of the type of deal you negotiate, but a record label may be able to deny your involvement in certain uh, things outside of the. Uh, recording right because they because if they they own your image right so they like you know what we don't want you being involved in that or you know yeah it's gonna make some money but you know we don't think that's going to be the best look so I or ch- or think- or charge like a retarded fee right like a charge a fee that's so high that the people that want to work with you can't work with you because right. the label is but basically yeah. you kind of get shafted on the back end yeah it's like. It- yeah, like, and yeah, yeah, your record, like, yeah, if you're in your record, if your record label is difficult to work with when it comes to like, you know, with your booking and, and, and some of these things that they may be part of, you know, if, if the individuals that are working at the label, if they're difficult to work with, 
you know, you could lose out on all, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of uh, opportunities, you know, because um, that's, that's happened, you know, and uh, fighting amongst booking agencies and uh, record company booking. Um, they've, they've been internal battles in, in, in certain retrospects. So, you know, it really just comes down to our core 360 deal that you got to make sure that everything works 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 best for you. Like everything is smoothed out. You know, you have to get something for it. Let's be clear. If you're going to do a 360 deal, you got to get something for it. The same way they're going to get something for it, you got to get something for it. That's real, man. Because honestly, honestly, that's, that's the, the main thing is everybody's looking for a partnership that's beneficial. Right. And a beneficial partnership, a way that each person benefits. Uh, some people benefit a little bit more than others. The key is to take whatever you're getting and to multiply it and find yeah, a way right. to, to, to make that grow. Like that's mm-hmm. the only way that you're going to really survive in the game. Again, like that's, that's really what we're talking about here. This is what we're talking about on the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast, folks. This is what we're talking about. Thank you. So, like, you figure, you know, I, I want to kind of segue this a little bit into, you know, the the basic distribution deal, right? Mm-hmm maybe with the ability to upstream okay um you know just just briefly for those who might not understand like a basic distribution deal can be anywhere from where excuse me where the the label just distributes your music at a fee right five five ten fifteen twenty up maybe twenty five percent and then those horrible deals mm-hmm. right and they'll take twenty five off the top you get the right. rest and then if you want any "Quote unquote services, right? You have to pay for those a la carte, right? And that means you have to pay for each individual service. So if you want marketing on a particular project, you got to give them the scope. You got to get a submit a request. You got to tell them how much you want, what the budget is, and then you got to pay it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, same thing if you want any promo or anything else, you have to pay for everything individually." Um, influencer campaigns, you name it, you have to pay for it. Videos, you're going to have to pay for it. So that's that situation. Now, what we're dealing with an upstream situation. An upstream situation is where they monitor you and they monitor what you're doing in terms of your numbers. And if you hit, if you hit a certain threshold, then that distribution deal can turn into a kind of a regular record deal with some yeah, more you packing. Kind of graduate. Like, like what happens is if you're trying to just well, what happens is a lot of all the major record labels and major distributors have, uh, I would say, a, maybe a, a subsidiary sort of label. Sort of like an incubator. Incubator labels. Um, or artist and, development label, as right, you may say, right? Give or take. Know, that they kind of got tucked away. They don't, they don't always announce it as this is our label, but they own it. They own the label. And what they do is they'll sign a bunch of independent artists who wouldn't let them do their thing. And you know, of course, you you know, use your use the services or whatever you whatever your budget is. You, you will implement it into your marketing and your campaign. You know what we just went over. Now, if those campaigns are successful, and you start to hit a certain threshold as far as the numbers are concerned, then the parent company looks at it and says, "Hey." We, we, we're noticing you and it's kind of built in so they say okay you have the opportunity to kind of graduate we're going to move you up to the, the record company the actual official record company you know so you'll graduate to the major and they'll take it from there you know and if that happens i think that's that's a that's a great you know that's a great thing to happen um, but you also have to make sure that your, your lawyers are on deck to make sure that, you know, the deal that happened, um, you may have to renegotiate a new, a new deal, you know, for that, you know, because the numbers and everything else is going to be slightly different. You know, you want to make sure that you're able to get what you can get, you know, and, and where it's going, you know. So um, 
that's pretty much what you know, you know, upstream and you know, that's how it works. So I hope everybody was paying attention to how what we just did. We just broke down. We've exposed the 360 deal. We talked about the truth behind the controversy. We talked about what's the pros and the cons of the 360 are. We talked about the distribution deal, standards distribution deal. We talked about how to upstream. What are we talking about now? Read the contracts. Read your contracts, right? <laughs> talk about read your contracts. Contract. Listen, make sure you follow in. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Make sure you're asking questions. Make sure you're leaving comments. The book is out. The Songwriter's Guide to Song Registration, right? The Essential Steps to Protect and Monetize Your Music. It is out right now. People yeah. are downloading it. It's yeah, free. Yeah, it's being downloaded like wildfire. For yeah. everybody that's downloading it, thank you. For everybody that's sharing it, thank you. It's all about us trying to give some information and give some resources back to artists. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, coming soon for February, we're, we're, we're giving back again with more song, uh, song submissions where artists can sub submit their songs for professional feedback. Let's and we're reopening, and we're reopening back up the Spotify playlist. For uh, for for who we think is heating up on the scene, and we're trying to give folks that platform again, and in terms of the Spotify uh, playlist, and again in that situation. So, some things to look out for as we start to grow into the new year, and then we also have some special guests. We got some surprises for you guys, some special guests that we think will add a lot of value um, to what we're trying to do and what we're trying to go with this thing. So stay tuned. So if you haven't already, follow at architectbeats.com. Follow us at Architect Beats on all our major platforms. Yes, sir. Download the ebook, Protect and Monetize Your Music, you the Songwriter's Guide to Registration, Song Registration. While you can. A lot of jewels right now, people. You know, look out for some more things coming. So we gotta we gotta make it, we gotta make it happen and make sure people can understand what's going on. Yeah, feel um, free to reach out. Let them feel free to reach out to us, DM us, uh, topics that you want to talk about, you know, that you want us to expound on, uh, some things we may quite not understand. Um, there's a lot of misinformation going on online, a lot of misinformation. I spend way too much time going back and forth with a lot of people online, with people who do not know the music business, do not know what they're talking about. And they're just out there spewing out incorrect misinformation. Do not get caught up with that, please. Yeah, you're gonna get jammed up, and it's really gonna. It's you don't want to get jammed up on some of these deals. Some of these deals you can't you can't bounce back from. Right, and you know, you know, we want to push the for the, the culture forward. You know, um, if you guys are getting jammed up in bad deals, that does not help the culture. That does, doesn't help doesn't help move any of us forward. It just keeps us stuck and stagnated in bad deals and bad situations. If you guys are doing bad deals, these record companies, uh, these, these publishers, um, they're going to keep giving us all bad deals. So let's look out for each other, give us each other the right information so that we can grow, uh, push this culture forward, and, and, and make some way for the next generation. Till next time, people. Peace. Peace.